This video is sponsored by Skillshare. You may have already heard of Skillshare as an online learning platform for creative skills such as photography or video editing. But did you know they have hundreds of career-focused classes too? Skillshare can help you take your career into your own hands. On Skillshare, you can find courses that help you approach your vision to create a new and unique work life for yourself. Because career paths are not one-size-fits-all. One of my goals for the future is to build my own website with an online shop. I've been taking the class Diversify Your Income and Earn Passive Income to help me improve upon my career and support myself in this economy while still doing what I love. This class in particular offers information for me to learn a variety of different ways I can build a website or online shop so I have a lot of different options to choose from. There's so much to explore and discover on Skillshare, and it's never too late to learn something that you're interested in learning. So if you'd like to give it a try, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. I hope you will get to learn something new. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and supporting the ASMR community.
Charlie legends describe pixies as small, childlike beings who live beneath stone circles and fairy mounds. describes them as handsome human-sized beings. Well, this is interesting. Shakespeare sometimes used the terms elves and fairy These are cute. The 
reason most people don't see fairies is because they occupy a parallel universe, which exists alongside our own, but functions at a different resonance. One way to understand this concept is to compare it to TV or radio channels. When you're watching or listening to one channel, you can't see or hear the others, but they're still there. The same holds true for the land of fairies, or realm of the fae. Legends say that fairies went into hiding to avoid the humans who invaded their lands. I mean, that's not surprising. <laughs> In some cases, the fairies literally went underground, making their homes in caves, burrows, and underwater fortresses. about three feet tall, show up at night to do chores for household members. They tidy up the kitchen, mow the grass, run errands, and make themselves useful in dozens of ways. These unassuming fairy folk wear ragged brown servant's clothing and sport shaggy hair and beads. Shaggy hair and beard. It's not a good idea to try to give them better garments, though, for they may take offense and leave. <laughs> Shakespeare's fairies. Shakespeare's fairies. Shakespeare's fairies. Fairies became fashionable in English literature during the 16th century. Due in part to William Shakespeare's delightful romantic comedy, A Midsummer Night's Dream. 
especially fond of fish. Some eat toadstools. Garden fairies naturally prefer flower nectar or wild berries. That sounds good. Some don't eat at all. Get the nourishment they need from merely smelling flowers. <laughs> Same. Bread. Bread, a staple in the human world, gets mixed reviews from fairies. Spirits and Britain's brownies like bread, but in Newfoundland, people use bread to ward off fairies. The dwarves in Tolkien's fantasy books eat a nourishing but rather hard and tasteless bread called crumb. Another type of bread known as lembus, lembus was a specialty among the elves who kept their recipes secret. Modern day fairies, however, might turn up their little noses at traditional elfin bread. Instead, serve them soft white fairy bread, cut into fun shapes, Spread with butter and decorated with colorful sprinkles. I want fairy bread. <laughs> I want fairy bread really bad. Okay. I will now go to the Discover the 
the common symbols associated with them and learn tales of merfolk from around the world. Get swept away by Oh, 
this is pretty. the imagination of painters who portrayed them as lush, lovely creatures who captivated art collectors just as they had captivated seafarers for centuries. The paintings of Victorian era artists such as John William Waterhouse and Frederick Layton helped to form our ideas of what mermaids look like. These lush romantic pictures blend tantalizing sensuality with the Britishness of the time period. strongest swimmer. 
I know how to swim and I can tread water for a very, very long time. But I didn't grow up with um, an ocean nearby, so I never really learned. fun time. 